<laughs> Sandra, where are you calling from? I'm in Texas. Oh, deep in the heart of, huh? Deep in the heart of Texas, but now, not a Texan. Now, you're having a grand reopening there today, right? Oh, boy. Yeah. No, Friday they did it. Friday. Have you been out? They opened malls. They opened. Yeah. Did you go to any of them or do any of that? You kidding? <laughs> oh, good for you. Good for you. You know, uh, our governor, Governor Cuomo, in his daily thing, and by the way, if any of you are watching us, uh, you can also call in. We're testing out using Zoom as a method of doing something, okay? <laughs> uh, where did my thing go? Oh, I see. That's why. I better put that back up again. Uh, just so they see it again. But if you're on Facebook and you go to Zoom, turn off your Facebook. <laughs> yes, we've just we've just learned that. Tom has discovered that. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, we have uh, we have. Uh, I had to put it up again because it it goes down to the, it disappears as people write notes and things like that. Maybe I. By the should... way, by the way, Alex. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I just came off of an hour and a half of Quaker meetings. Uh, really? Uh, when you set up your notice that you were you were alive, so I just switched over from uh, Berkeley Friends meeting after announcements. Wow. So, yeah. So really? I was already. Uh, I spent much of the morning on Zoom. Yeah. Now Zoom is. I think Zoom is great for groups of people talking to each other. I just can't use it on my show because sure. it isn't portable. I can't port it to right. what we call OBS, which is the uh, switching system that we use, which if people don't know what I'm talking about, switching system, when I do something like this, okay, that's switching, okay? So uh, I, I, in order to do this, I have to kind of uh, take the display and crop it so that I use it. It looks good, it looks terrific, but I can't control it. I can't put a background on it. I can't put logos and things like that. So it's it's kind of, you know, it's a pain in the ass. Um, Sandra, what do you do down there in Texas? I'm actually a pharmaceutical technician. Really? So I'm those, quote, essential workers. Uh -huh. What do you do? <laughs> what, what do you do exactly? I mean. Well, I'm not working in retail, so I'm not filling prescriptions. I'm working for a specialty pharmacy. Mm -hmm. okay. So we do high end like really you know ten thousand dollar a month medications so the stuff that people will get that they have to have made up special as opposed to something they go down to cvs and get right right just yeah. stuff that is really expensive like any hep c medications or humera yeah that stuff is incredibly expensive how uh, here's what i don't get let's let, <laughs> talk for a second about the price of drugs okay mm. uh uh, for instance, I get a bill. I have recently had a uh, operation for prostate cancer. They put in right, some seeds. They put in some seeds, and they, you know, they radiated me. And now every time I fart, <laughs> a, a, a mushroom cloud comes out of my ass. You know, I mean, I'm just. I, but what happened was I got the bills on it, which go to Medicare, and then from Medicare it goes to my SAG AFTRA uh, uh, account, and. They send a bill for one of them was sixty six thousand dollars, and then <laughs> Medicare says, "Uh uh, you're we're only paying sixteen, right?" And so it whittles down. Does the same thing happen with your drugs, your drugs at the pharmacy? When you say there's a ten thousand dollar drug, I mean, oh no, no. In the end, do you only get like three cents or something like that? Oh you no. Know? We no. get the ten grand. <laughs> you get the ten grand. Now yeah. suppose I'm on Medicare, right? I or whatever, the, whatever the insurance has negotiated with our company. But usually, it's you know, if it's something like Humera, yeah, we're getting we're getting a lot of money. And what now the manufacturers have done because some of the insurances won't pay for this anymore, the manufacturers step in and they have these quote copay cards that you can use to. Yeah. finance the, the medication yeah but you can't use it if you're on medicare medicaid you know. okay so what i'm saying is so you have a ten thousand dollar drug like you that's what they say it costs i don't know why it costs that much but no, apparently they had to send their people to school or something i don't know 
uh, it only costs that much because people need it and they could charge that much, right? It's, just, it's pure exploitation. It's capitalism. Yeah. It's still under it's still under um, trademark. Right. When it goes it's still under patent. Yeah. So when it goes no when it go, when it goes generic, it it could get cheaper. Although some of the generics are more expensive. Are more expensive. I, that's yeah. a, the the weird part about this. But yeah, Yamara is used for what basically? Usually it's used for um, rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, mm -hmm. um, psoriasis. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a biologic is what they call it, like an injectable biologic. Mm -hmm. And it, they use it for so many different things. I think that's what keeps it so expensive. The yeah. problem with something like that is it like destroys your immune system. Oh, good, and then you get COVID, you know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> or you, you, they have to put you on a respirator for COVID because you haven't got anything fighting right. COVID. Oh, yeah. boy. Hello, Mark Thorner. This is a guy that calls our show a lot. This is, I, I'm testing Zoom today. I thought maybe we if we, we could go on Facebook and, and do this, and it, uh, it seems, yeah, it's all working fine. Um I mean, it seems pretty clear. It's a game. It's a and it's a totally rigged game, right? I had to get a refill on a prescription. Mm -hmm. I didn't want, I couldn't go to the doctor. I'm downtown New York. I called the office. I said, "Can I get a refill?" They said, "Sure." Um, they did it for me in thir thirty second phone call, and I got a three hundred dollar EOB this week for that phone call. Oh boy. Oh boy. So it's just pure. <laughs> doctor, now yeah, a new well, way to do uh, this. Now, uh, now you don't have to come to the office. What happened with me in drugs is I got my SAG after uh, stuff, uh, SAG after uh, uh, secondary, okay, and uh, it was costing. Uh, and my drugs every month when I would go down to CVS were costing me one hundred ninety-five dollars a month. It now costs me uh, one hundred and thirty-five. For three, for three months. months. For three months. Now, I don't understand that disparity. It's but, not understandable. Huh? <laughs> it's not understandable. Right. You can't understand it. <laughs> I know. It's weird. They make it up, and they'll always be you know, a few steps ahead of you in this game. Wow. It's just, you know, there's no getting ahead of it. Hi, Bob Eberth. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Haven't seen you in a while. The sound is very good on, uh, on this. You know, um, uh, I mean, I there's something about Zoom I really like. I just wish we could use it and be an effective show. Wait a minute, is my wife home? Marjorie, I'm a, I'm doing a little fun show here on Facebook. <laughs> Come on in. Uh, anyway, I, um, I like your T-shirt, Alex. Oh, the video toaster T-shirt. You know how old the, this thing is? Uh, Twenty years old, something like that. Amazing hmm. amount of time. Uh, I'm doing a little show here on Facebook uh -huh. using Zoom. Yeah. Uh, uh, and the, I'm, I'm doing a, a show on Facebook. Look, don't get near me. You've been out. Go clean yourself. <laughs> Go wash. I'm doing that. <laughs> Plug your mask. Don't, don't forget to autoclave yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, we are. Uh, and when you get a chance, can you bring me my coffee when you're clean? It's in the bedroom. Oh, God. Anyway, uh, no, so this shirt is like 90, if 10, if, what, what do we figure, 20 years old? It says the, the year on the back, does it, does it, doesn't it? I, I, I can't see the back, so you, you're you going to have to tell me. What does the back say at all? Anything? No, can't read it. Can't you got to turn. <laughs> I got to turn? Here. Oh, gosh. Does it have a year there? It just, I could just read Xmas. That's it. Oh, how about, how about this? Uh, you're too far. Well, hold on a second, Alex. Let me. Oh, I don't know where I'm standing because I can't see from the back. <laughs> um, are you seeing it? I think it says all? established. What do I can? Uh, it's too do you small. See, do you see the, yeah. you see the year? Oh, the year looks like. Speak hmm? yeah. No? No? Can't do it. Can't do it. February. Oh, well. Hold on. February something, 19? I'll let you know later when I take Maybe it off. Maybe December. You know. It's in the 19, it's 19 something. It was in the 20th it, century. It was like 19. I would say this was something like, geez, I think this is like 1995, something like that. 
Yeah. I think it said 97. 97? Okay. I think so. Yeah. That's about right. So th this was their Christmas party. Uh, they gave them out every year. And um, so this is like 22 years old. And look how good, it's perfect condition, you know. Of course, I didn't start wearing it till a couple of months ago. But, you know, because <laughs> we found it. In, it was sent to me by D my Damien Ch uh, Chaplin, who also houses my storage locker uh, north of San Francisco. And uh, he sent it to me in a package. So, but getting back to the cost of medicine, I mean, geez, almighty, you know, it's uh, it's 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 ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. The, the, the cost of everything. But I got a sixty-six thousand dollar bill, and that was for the seeds, I think. And then then they sent another forty-five thousand dollar bill for the radiation. There right? you go. You know, I mean, this is more money than I made in a lifetime, practically. You know, I mean, it's really, you know. But then when it comes down to it, uh, I have to, I have some co-pays and things like that, you know. And I had to, out, of, out of pocket, it's about $500. So I'm not arguing, okay? I'm not arguing. Um, how you doing, Mark Thorner? A lot better than everyone else seems to be doing, even though I'm furloughed, <laughs> yeah. you know. But other than that... You know where I live here in Florida? Yeah. There's only not even 25 deaths. 600 and some odd people are affected. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, this is going against the rest. You know, once again, this area goes against everything else. Wait, now you're you're <clears throat> in, um, I'm trying to remember, Bo not Boca. Uh, no. Other coast, uh, Naples, Florida. N Naples, Florida. Naples, right. I, I should remember because I make jokes about it being nipples. You know. Yeah, well, we all, yeah, yeah, uh, and um, so you you've had very few deaths there. How many did you say? Not even twenty five at this point. Really? Because today we are we had according to the governor, I and mean, this is good. We're going yay for us. Two hundred and eighty deaths. You know, and uh, hopefully that's going to keep going down. I mean, at one point when I first started watching Cuomo doing these things, it was about seven hundred deaths a day. You know, uh, and um, uh, the coffins were piling up at the 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 uh, at the medical centers. And they had big big trucks that were like refrigerator trucks, so they could put the bodies in there. I mean, it was just it was insane. And now we're okay. You know, we're we're coming down, and the the the, the curve is coming down. But what he's not doing, he's not letting his foot Whoa. off. Huh? Um. um something did anyone else see that what the person passing in back of you oh that was marjorie that was marjorie with very little on Mar put your clothes on <laughs> close the door she says <laughs> i'm sorry i shouldn't yeah. have said anything but <laughs> i didn't notice okay folks the show's over uh <laughs> Well, there was a news reporter that was doing uh, his report, and his mistress walked behind him, and that's how he got caught. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, this was about a week or so ago, I believe. My God, I love I love seeing these reporters. I love seeing there are a couple of factors about the reporters. It's fun seeing them work from home. To begin with, none of them have their makeup people. Right. <laughs> okay, and secondly, none of them can get their hair cut, and. Uh, but lastly, we get to see the kind of environment they live in, you know, and then we get to see their pets. Uh, there's a lot of things you see about these people, and it, it it makes the whole thing much more real, you know, than it has been. And it's kind of nice to see these people without makeup because some people suffer no makeup badly, and others look just fine, you know. So that's good. Uh, Tom, how's everything up in Berkeley? Well, uh, Berkeley, I uh, just checked the, uh, our new uh, dashboard that the city of Berkeley's health department has put up. And by the way, uh, Berkeley is among the unique cities that has its own health department in addition to the county health department, Alameda County. Mm -hmm. There's a Zoom bomb, and that's the reason why Zoom added that security of, of keeping people in a waiting room until you approve them. 
So, <laughs> so you know what happens? Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, you know, Berkeley High, mm -hmm. which was doing, uh, you know, its classes of had that kind of interruption. It was a, a video, it was a recording of someone dancing naked in a garage somewhere. Okay. And they had to shut their system down until they figured out what to do. But fortunately, Zoom has been responsive to these problems and has developed uh, security measures. But, yeah, you know, like even with passwords. Well, let me try to admit, let me try to admit Jonah here and see what happens. If this is another bomb, it says joining. There's also Adrian, Aiden rather, joining. Okay, let me see if they're bad. If they're bad, I can get rid of them now because I know That's what this true. bombing is about. Hello, Aiden? No, okay, so we'll get rid of Aiden. <laughs> He's there? Aiden? Yeah. Jonah, hello, Jonah, you there? Yeah, looks like Jonah's there. You there, Jonah? Do you have your mic on? It's muted. You're muted, D Jonah. Unmute. Okay, are you there, Jonah? Can you hear us? Huh. God. Yeah, we lost Jonah. Okay, uh, let's see. Alex Wells wants to be admitted. Let's see here what <laughs> what happened. With, oh no! Oh no! That's got to be a, that's got to be a bad one. Okay. Hi, hi guys, hi guys. Are you there, Alex? Yeah, I'm here. Is, is this is this an AA meeting? No, it isn't an <laughs> AA meeting. Wait, I thought this was an AA meeting. I wanted to share my experience on alcohol and those stuff. Well, no, this is just well, this is just like a little program we're doing as a test, Alex. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, I'm just gonna leave. Oh, okay. Bye. <laughs> okay. And uh, let me see here. There's uh, Jeanette Gillis. Let me see. We, who knows? We may get one of these bombs again, or or we might get a actual. You know what? You know what, Bennett? I was gonna raid you guys, but you're pretty cool. Yo, guys, don't rate him. Uh, you're, you're pretty cool. You're pretty chill for an old guy. You're pretty chill. I like you. That, that, I like you. Thank you. I like you. I appreciate Yo, it. Yo, guys, don't rate. Don't rate. Don't rate. All right. So enjoy your days, guys. All right. Okay. Bye. All right. See you. Okay. There we go. Uh, Je Jeanette, are you there? <laughs> Je Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. Can you uh, turn on your... Do you have a camera? Um, Unfortunately, I don't. Oh. I'm just using a phone of mine. Okay. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from South Carolina. South Carolina. How is it down? Are you a state that opened up at all? Um, barely. We're opening up the beaches now. I think it's kind of ridiculous, to be honest. Yeah. I think we're just, it's just going to spread more. Yo, hey, yo. You're getting Zoom bombed. You're getting Zoom bombed, bro. Okay, I got to I gotta get rid of somebody. Hold on a second. Um, so, so have they opened up, as I say, Janet, or are they still staying shut? Um, they're opening up partly. They're opening up retail and the beaches. Oh, okay. Uh, how how are the beaches? I mean, are they all crowded and everything? Because that's dangerous. Oh, yeah. People are going right back there. It's ridiculous. You know something? I think we're really going to see a spike. In in, know, it's, in it's you're like, saying I'm, that I'm, look, Sandra is a pharmacist. You 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 you're smelling a spike going on, right? I I think it's inevitable. How could it not be? How yeah. could it not be? Yeah. Uh, Except for the states where they're maintaining sanity, like California and New York, Connecticut, where they're not opening up. Not a single state. Here they're met, opening up nail salons. Not a single state has met the 14 day. No new cases before reopening. Oh. Texas reopened on, on uh, May first, and that was the day Dallas County recorded right. the most number of oh, cases. Yeah. yeah, no, about half the states have opened, and none of them have plateaued for fourteen days. No. Wow. Uh, I, 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 you know, I just, I love our governor. I love the the way he's been doing this. He certainly and, stepped up. Yeah. He, well, he's very scientific about it, and says we got to have the data before we go ahead and 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 do this. You know. And um, he also, he said something today. He said, wear a mask. He said, Respect. now, you, maybe you think you don't want to wear a mask, but when you're wearing a mask, you're doing it to help prevent someone else from getting it. 
when he's wearing a mask, he is doing the same. He said it's a very reciprocal relationship you have with everybody else. And the nice part about it is what you're doing is showing respect. But when you don't wear a mask, you're showing you do not have respect for the people around you. And I think that's a great way to put it, you know. Did we lose did we lose Mark Thorner? We did in that whole thing that happened to us. Uh, Mark, if you're listening, call back. Um, but so I, that's that's the way to look at it, I think. You know, uh, I just noticed yesterday when I was out, I went for a walk to Madison Square Park, and there were so many people, and too many, not wearing masks. And most of the people not wearing oh, masks. Oh no! Here we go masks. again. <laughs> Janet is a baddie. We got to get rid of Janet. Here's Hold here. on a second. Oh boy. Uh, they get out of doing this. Yeah, how do I get out of this? That's what I'm trying to figure out. How do I kill? You gotta hang up on her. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Where Where is Janet? There we are. Okay, I'll hang up on yeah. Janet. Remove Janet. Okay. Remove Janet. There, there we go. There, there's also a way for you not to allow people in the conversation to share their screens like they're doing. Oh, really? I'm not sure where that is. It's one of the things at the bottom of the screen. Or you can, uh, one of the settings oh, I see. Share screen, and then it says, well, one participant can share at a time. Don't Multiple allow any participant, It doesn't say advanced sharing options. Here we go. Yeah, uh, only you should be allowed to share as host. Uh, only host can share. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Uh, yeah. All right. Only host can share. Okay. So I only, only an, I can put up porno pictures. Yeah. So only <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, b by the way, if you're if you're watching, um, uh, uh, please uh, call back. Uh, you know that we. Uh, I think we're finished with the bombs. Thank you. That was very. See, I you're the guy who teaches Zoom, right? I don't teach Zoom, but I've been teaching classes through Zoom, so I've picked oh, up. Oh, through a Zoom, of I see. Okay, yeah. I'm because, pretty much a luddite, but I learned some, learned some, a couple of things. Yeah, well, you ta taught like me the background, something. So you don't see my wife walking around yeah. naked behind. So, so you say, Tom, this is a problem that they're having with Zoom is people doing these what they call yeah, bombs. Yeah, that's that's true. That's that's as I said. But but Zoom has been working on a number of security uh, features that uh, that core to keep that at a minimum, uh, yeah. you know. And by the way, I've got a committee meeting in two minutes, so I'm going to have to say goodbye. Yeah. OK. OK. All right, uh, Tom. And uh, the other problem is I can't change my name on there. Yeah, well, I yes, you can. Where, yeah. where do you change you, it? You mean you can't change as a host? Here, no, it says Ben Schwarzman is my real name, and that's who the right. account is under. How do I change that? You should. Well, I don't know about the host, but I, I know that I can, I can change my name by clicking on participants and then... Uh, Let's see here, participants. And then... Uh, then, no. then there's well yeah I can't see how you can get it from here but for me uh, there's a oh rename rename here it is more, here it is hold on a second wait a minute I more, think I can do it and it says rename yeah more and then it says rename Oops. come on you got it yeah but I'm trying to type I can't type well okay today. well I gotta go <laughs> okay all righty I'll talk to you later okay. okay. Okay, bye. See you later. That's Tommy Amaguchi, ladies and gentlemen. And, and say, say hi to uh, Marjorie. Okay, I certainly will. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There he goes. Um, so how are you all weathering being sticking and staying? Are you all staying in the house? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I am. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, as some, I mean, I've always been pretty good at you give me books, records, and movies, and I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I don't like that it's... I'm forced to do it, and once the weather gets really nice, it'll be harder, right? Um, but what can you do? You got to keep everyone safe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no I question. out once a week because I have to go to the hospital to have my foot looked at. Yeah, and you got to answer 21 questions before you can get into the hospital. What do you mean 21 questions? I mean, it's, it's a questionnaire. Like, have you met anybody? You've been in a foreign country. Yeah. Have you? Are you feeling numbness? Have you had a fever? Have you lost taste or sensation? Have you been to New York City or New Jersey? Mm -hmm. wow. I live in upstate New York, right on the Vermont border, right on the southern tip of Lake Champlain. And even as remote as we are, 
We have 159 confirmed cases, seven deaths, and about 183, I think it was, suspected cases in the county I'm in. Mm -hmm. Wow. 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 Uh, uh, it, the problem is that, that uh, like, for instance, I had this, this, pro this, this prostate cancer op procedures. Don't worry. I, something else is going to kill me. Um, like my wife, if we have to stay in this apartment much longer. Anyway, uh, I, um, uh, the, after the month after the seeds, they want you to come and do a CT scan. It's just It's not diagnostic. It's just for their records. And also get a blood test to see what your PSA is. So I get the call, and I tell the, the, the woman, the nurse, I said, there's no way I'm going to Mount Sinai Hospital. There's no, and I said, let's say you're completely clean. I have to get into a Lyft or an Uber in order to get there. And I don't know how dirty that is with the, with the coronavirus. Uh, and I said, I just, I think because I've had the operation, you know, I'm a little bit on the, uh, uh, what do you call it, side? Uh, more at risk. Yeah, more at risk. Uh, there you are. Oh, wait a minute. You open the door. And you can see you in your underpants. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, well. Anyway, so um, where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, so I just said, I can't, I, can't, I can't do it. And they said, that's okay. But go get the blood test. And then I thought about that, and I wrote her back, and I said, I can walk seven blocks down to the Quest lab and get the blood test. But then I have to go into the lab. And I said, I just feel that I'm more at risk because I'm currently, I've been compromised, my immune system's been compromised by the procedures, and I just don't want to take the chance. And she said, okay, get it when you can get it. You know, it's no big deal. It's just, just for us. To, it's, it's, to, it, the blood test is to get a baseline for us. So, uh, you know, I, I just wasn't about to go to the hospital. So I'm amazed that you are brave enough, Bob, but you, you drive by car, right? Yeah. You see, I don't worry that much about the hospitals. I worry about the car getting me there, the transportation to get me there. Well, what's bad about up here is uh, we have a clinic in town where I should be able to get that stuff done. Mm -hmm. They've closed all the clinics. Wow. And I have to drive 20 miles minimum to get blood done. Mm hmm uh, it's about a 30 mile drive to the hospital. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. but that's my one day out. We go to the hospital and we go to the grocery store on the way back. Wow. 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 Amazing. Amazing. I, I, uh, so we, we go out. I mean, we, we went to, uh, well, I don't go to Costco anymore. I, I use a thing called Instacart and I have somebody that actually goes shopping for you and then brings it to your house. And that cost me about $35, but usually the cab and back usually cost me 20 So I figure for 15 bucks, it's safer than going into Costco. Um, there are places I just don't want to go. You know, I mean, I'll go, I'll walk down the street. I'll go to my pharmacy. Um, they, they're, you know, all set up so that you don't have to touch anything except the bag when you take it. Um, and where else have we been? Oh, Mar we, Marjorie went up to a place to get croissants. We walked up there, and she went in. And there were two people in there, and there was social distance. Uh, and, um, you know, you just got to be very careful. It's like, uh, you know, it's a very paranoid, careful game that you have to play. Um, I'm wondering, you know, is there any way school's going to open in September? How can it? Well, No. Uh, I I mean, I'm, a, I'm in a private school in a vertical building with a thousand people in it. It's just impossible. Everything, every room is crowded. How are you going to do it? Yeah, uh, unless you you cut down the number of students that can go. Which they, you know, which they can't do. It's in they're charging them who knows what sixty thousand dollars a year. Well, I was what did I, what did I see that NYU now per year is seventy thousand yeah. dollars a year? No. Where do you get that kind of money to go to college? <laughs> And I'm at high. I'm at a high school. That's sixty thousand dollars a year. Private high school. Yeah. 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 Sixty thousand. I heard about. Are you ready for this? I heard about a kindergarten. Yeah. That was 40. thirty thousand dollars a year. A private kindergarten. 
Yeah, our kindergarten is, I think, 40. Yeah. I mean, $30,000 for your kid to go play with crayons? Come on. Well, what you're hoping to do is buy that diploma, right? So when they graduate, they've got that diploma, which gets them into Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Brown. Wow. That's what you're doing. It's not about what you're paying for. It's, you know, I mean, you're paying for a, this end result, which is sickening. That's ridiculous. I mean, if you send a kid from kindergarten all the way to, you know, to, to uh, senior status and graduating, that's got to be a million bucks or something like that that you're having yeah, to put many out. Families, we have many families with two, three kids going K through 12 at that rate. So there's a lot of rich people in this city, Alex. I know there are a lot of rich people <laughs> in this city, but I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. You know, that's absolutely ridiculous. And yeah. uh, there uh, now, of course, we have public schools, which you can go to for free. Uh, yeah. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, I guess. Um, and, uh, yeah, wow, it's a lot of money. A lot of a lot money. Of, a lot of broken systems, medicine, education, right? Okay, so we're talking to two people there, here, at least, uh, Sandra and Steve, who are in professions which have jacked up their prices. <laughs> Come on! I mean, we're, not, we're probably you're not probably not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. You know, it doesn't go to my pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just I'm very I'm very fortunate that I get Medicare, and I'm very fortunate that I have SAG after insurance, uh, which is like only about two grand a year for this the uh, what do you call it the um, the co the pay on the twenty percent that Medicare doesn't pay. Um, but You're I'm, very fortunate. I'm, I'm very fortunate. I have Blue Cross Blue Shield. I was hospitalized for pancreatitis yeah. in December, and yeah. I pay a lot for my insurance. I still walked away owing $3,000. Really? And then had to go back for follow-up, and now I owe them another three grand. So that's the joy of commercial insurance well commercial insurance you know i mean i even i have this thing called from sag after i didn't know i could get it but it turns out it's only about two grand a year for my wife and i uh for the uh, uh for the uh, uh, supplemental insurance and um uh even with that i find that they have a lot of things like the 250 a year copay okay the, you know the deductible and then after that uh, there's a deductible for doctors of two hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, uh, so now we're up to five hundred, and th that so I paid that out, and then all of a sudden I start getting bills again, and I go, well, wait, a minute, what's this for? They say, well, it's a coinsurance. We pay, <laughs> we have to pay twenty percent of what Medicare pays. Of that twenty percent, we pay ninety percent, and you have to do the rest as a copay. It's coinsurance. And I said, so how much do I have to spend before I don't have to spend that anymore? What's the deductible on that? And they said, oh, it's $2,700. Yeah. So after I put out $2,700, I won't owe anything if I get bills. Now, granted, I've had over $100,000 worth of procedures. And believe me, I don't, for the life of me, I don't understand how it's $100,000 worth of procedures. I made five trips to, an, to, a, to a, a radiation machine that sat there and just it was like something out of science fiction went right went around my body then all of a, it, they they start doing all kinds of things and then they tell you okay uh this is about 40 minutes later uh, uh it'll take about two minutes we're going to radiate you now and this thing goes yeah yeah and you don't feel anything and you go back and go back there five more times and it, it never takes more than about 30 minutes now and the bill comes to $45,000. Actually, I thought the bill was going to be more than that. Really? I th yeah, I thought forty five grand. That's not bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the way bills go today? Well, forty five grand is what they, they tell the insurance company. Right. The insurance, the insurance company insurance doesn't pay that. No, we're not paying that. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so they negotiate with the insurance company. Okay, well, we'll take whatever you say it's worth. That's what happens with Medicare. When they when they say we take Medicare, they have to agree to take whatever Medicare feels the procedure is worth. And they don't feel that my $45,000 procedure is worth $45,000. <laughs> you know. I mean, uh, $3 for a cotton swab? I don't think that they're going to pay those kind of prices. Uh, 
here's a scary thought about this yeah. uh, COVID-19 uh, lockdown. Yeah. Stormy and I are living on Social Security. Yeah. And we feel that we are better off than most of the working people and younger people because we at least have a stable income. Yeah. Yeah. That, no, that's true. I mean, well, my wife is still working. God bless the Chinese. They don't have age as a factor. They don't care about age. Uh, but um, she's still working. I'm not working. Uh, but I've got my Social Security. And I've got my uh, a little, little pension check every month, about 1000 bucks a month from uh, SAG-AFTRA. Uh, and then I've got our president's wonderful checks that he sends out, you know, the stimulus check, which... We got eleven hundred dollars or something. That's what it wound up being because of how because my wife is still working. Okay, otherwise we would have gotten the twenty four hundred. And then I got a very nice present, a letter from our president uh, in the email. Got a letter, got a letter he, you know, he couldn't stand the fact that some of these people were getting paid and his name there was no check, so his name wasn't on the check. Right. So he had to like send out an email to everybody who got paid through their. You know, their uh, their their account. Um, he had to it he, it him, scared the shit out of us yesterday. We got that letter yesterday. We opened up the mail. It's a letter from the IRS. <laughs> We're like, what the hell? And then it's got Donald Trump's signature saying, "I am great for sending you that check." So, oh, oh, you got the check? No, it just got deposited. You just uh, got deposited. Well, we I I didn't get this in the mail. I got this online. They actually well, sent me an email them. saying, "Hey, I'm President Trump. I'm happy yeah. that uh, no, yeah, I'm happy that I could be of service to you." you know? <laughs> yes. uh, the, uh, you know, this is going to change everything we do in life. It really is. You know, it's going to change the. Way. I'm not going. I'm I'm not going to a movie theater ever again. I don't think. Until yeah, I know a concert or a movie, that's, that's yeah. Uh, um, I mean, I don't know. Uh, th I guess there will be people who will go to those movies, but I think the movie theater is dead. If you want my opinion, because people have gotten used to watching their movies at home. You know, look at the screen in back of Sandra, and I'm sure she's not a terribly wealthy person, but <laughs> that's what a, a 55 inch screen you got in back of you. Yeah. <laughs> very much yeah and it's probably is it 4k no it's not 4K. oh it's not 4k 4k if you've got 4k you've got the same resolution of picture that you would get in a movie theater that movie that that thing that's projected on the screen which used to be film is now a hard drive sending videos picture to the screen and that screen it's 44k so uh, people are sitting at home with their 4K TV set watching a movie that they decided to release on uh, on video because they can't uh, get it into theaters and they're charging 20 bucks for that or 15 bucks for that and they're make uh, this movie the Trolls World Tour they made more money online they said in the first week than they would have made in the theaters and and the theaters are saying, well, we're never we're we're not we're not going to book Universal Films anymore because you're releasing this on. Well, where are they going to release it? Going to show it in your goddamn movie theater with nobody coming to see it? You know. Actually, the movie it might theaters bring back in the Texas. In. What? Yeah, the the movie theaters in Texas chose not to reopen. Yeah, drive-ins drive-ins will make a comeback. Yeah. Oh, Drive-ins will make a comeback, but I just don't think going out to see a movie anymore is going to be the deal. It's going to be sitting at home watching it here. Mm -hmm. Why Why should you? You've got a great screen, you know. Uh, even with your non-4K, you've got a good enough screen that you, if you could watch the next James Bond movie on that, you'd watch it there rather than go mm -hmm. to a theater and take the chances of infection. It's so expensive, a to be infected? <laughs> yeah. What, what, one one of the paper. groups that will benefit from this will be uh, the local mu musician because they already play tiny little venues, and they'll make their comebacks first before mm. the uh, big name. By the way, I see, we have, I see we have a lot of people listening to us. If any of you want to call, look right above this, and I uh, put a thing up right above the picture. I put a thing called Join Our, I, uh, our Cloud HD Video Meeting Now. 
So you can do it. You can just beep, and that'll be it. And we'll, we'll, you'll, you'll join us. But uh, what, if you, what it, Bob was saying, it, you know, I think it's a, a catch twenty two because those small clubs, I think, are the least likely to be able to reopen. They're going to go out of business. The, the Madison, sm- Madison Square Garden. I don't know what they're going to do, but certainly I'm worried about the Village Vanguard. You know, where I go hear jazz twice a week. Well, you know, let's say tomorrow everything is better, which you know that's. That's laughable. It's not going to be better tomorrow. Uh, but let's just say it is. Will people suddenly say, okay, it's safe for me to go to the movie theater. You know, I've got, they got the vaccination. You know, but once we have now seen what being too close to each other can cause. And there's only, it, it, there's, a, there's, there's another uh, COVID style virus somewhere working itself into the world. And it may not be as vicious as this one, but certainly it, it, it could happen. And they say that uh, to think that this will never happen again is ridiculous. It's going to happen again. And this virus may mutate. And what's interesting, what they found out, I just heard this today from watching Cuomo, is everybody thought that, eh, you know, the virus we got is the same virus they got in California. Not so. We got a mutated virus here. By the time it got to Europe, it had mutated. And they have tested the two strains against each other, and the two strains are different. And this one is far more lethal and bad as the one, than the one they got in California. That's why you don't see as many cases in California. And because everybody here is staying indoors, they're not traveling to California, they're not traveling to Texas, where they could start spreading it. So, uh, but this is a different COVID we've got here than they've gotten, uh, say, states like California, Washington, and uh, and the stupid part about Trump is he keeps saying, well, I, and I, I took a f- effective action, I closed, the, I, I closed travel from China to the United States. Great. It didn't come to the West East Coast from China. It came from Europe. And how do you think it got to Europe? You closed down the borders at the on the West Coast. They went to the East Coast. You know? And and nobody thought to shut down this border. He didn't think to shut down this border till mid March. A month and a half after he closed closed down China. So, you know, I'm, that's how it got so virulent here. I mean, if you look at them, uh, we have more cases of COVID uh, in uh, in New York and deaths than anywhere else in the world. I mean, the, the death count in other parts of the world is completely different, uh, much lower. So we're number one. We're <laughs> number one. Yeah, uh, yeah. You America firsters, congratulations! Yeah. You know, you, well, the first step has to be getting rid of this guy because he's the virus, and um, I, I don't have great hope that we're going to be able to get rid of him. Well, uh, well, we've got we've got uh, great hope in uh, uh, <laughs> the worst possible candidate running against him. Yeah, uh, I just uh, I I just think it's. Uh, I, you know, who I wish would run. Who, who? But they will, they'll never be able to get him to run. Okay. Cuomo is Cuomo. Yeah, he, he absolutely said. No, 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 well, right. I mean, he feels. I think he feels. I've got a job to finish here first. I'm in the middle of this whole thing. All right. Uh, oh, Charlie Wallace wants in. Okay, hold on, Charlie. I didn't see. See, I wasn't looking up there, so I didn't see. There we go. We're admitting Charlie Wallace. Okay. Charlie, are you uh, and Charlie is joining? It says okay. Well, we'll see. Uh, um, Jim, sorry, Charlie, if you were if you're listening. Oh, okay. Uh, Bob Eberth, no. Oh, here, there's Charlie. Hello, Charlie. He, he's connecting to audio. Uh, I I just think it's uh, I you know I wish would run. You, you know something, uh, Charlie. You got to turn off your. Uh, you got to turn off your. Uh, Facebook. What? Facebook. Turn off Facebook. 
I've been trying for half an hour to get in. That's oh, why I had oh, to I, You know what it is? I'm not used to using this, and I just notice there's a thing that says participants, and then it goes admit, and I'm looking at the screen talking to these people. You know? So, yeah. Uh, Anyway, so that's why I had the sound. Is there, a, by the way, Steve, is there any way that you can just let people automatically join without having to admit them? Uh, that, I, you know, I think you can do it without a waiting room. You can turn your waiting room off. And, oh, oh but I'm really? Not sure. Wait, uh, yeah, but that's when you get the Zoom bombs. <laughs> yeah, that, then you're going to yeah. get everyone no, but, jumping in. No, but I won't get the Zoom bombs because I won't take their screen share. That's right, how, now they can't share a screen. Yeah, so. they, now they can't share a if screen. If you turn the waiting room off, they could come directly Let in. me see here. Uh, statistics, recording, share screen, general. Uh, but, but, but when closed, ask me to confirm when I leave a meeting. No, remind me five minutes before. Uh, oh, reaction skin tone. That's politically correct. <laughs> um, yes, here. Um, uh, let's see. Video. Share screen. Virtual background. Recording. Statistics. Accessibility. Is that it? No. Yeah, I don't know where the waiting room is. Yeah, I probably it's probably somewhere I can set up. You got to be able to I set think, a poop. I think I read recently that Zoom changed their security to make waiting rooms. Nest, you know that you couldn't get away from them because people were just jumping in. Oh, I see. And the waiting room at least lets you say, "Okay, I'm not going to let that person okay. in." Well, so everybody, you can try now because I will look up at um, um, what's happening there. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Uh, are we okay? Yeah, uh, I'll, I will look to see if you are trying to join the meeting because poor Charlie was sitting there. He's in Texas <laughs> too, by the way, Sandra. Sandra's yeah, in Texas you're in as well. Austin, right? I'm near Dallas. I'm in Austin, yeah. Yeah, I'm a dad. I, yeah, I used to work in Houston for two years. I loved it. I just loved that city, especially back then. It was still kind of a cow town, <laughs> you know. I mean, you know, you had your you had your uh, those those bars and stuff, you know, those beer bars, and I don't know. It just had, yeah, uh, it it had a certain feel to it that I that I enjoyed and liked. And of all the towns that I ever left, I really felt bad about leaving Houston. You know, so when you hear about people living in Texas, they, they're really living. You're living in a good place. Yeah. It's just the people's politics suck. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I lived in Texas. I learned real fast the difference between a redneck and a goat roper. <laughs> <laughs> what is a goat roper? A redneck to a redneck. A redneck to a redneck is a goat roper? Yeah. I lived in Big Spring. Oh, really? Okay. And uh, very strange place. Uh, the hotel had, the Settles Hotel had a neon light on top. Mm -hmm. And every night a different light, a litter would be burnt out. And it turned out it was a code so that people out on the oil rigs and stuff would know which girls were in town. Oh, okay. Now that was what, what year was that? Uh, that would have been 71. Yeah, 72. because at that time, a lot of Texas was still kind of like the old Texas. You know, a real cow town. Uh, Houston, as I say, you had the beer bars. And you had, you know, just the whole setup of the town. It was very, very Texas. But I hear now that Houston is like, you know. It's a, it's a they had chicken wire bars uh, in the area. I remember one day watching a guy come riding into town on his horse, and he was packing iron, chewing and spitting. He had about a 10-year-old kid riding on the horse behind him. He was packing iron, chewing and spitting. And on the third horse was like a 3-year-old. He wasn't packing iron yet, but he was already chewing and spitting. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Um, wait a minute. What, what does your t shirt say, Sandra? Does it say Lake Tahoe? No. <laughs> oh, I thought it said Lake Tahoe for some reason. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, I, what I did in Texas, it was in the old days. If you, let's say some guy walked into a fancy restaurant wearing jeans, uh, a, a, a buckskin style jacket, and, and, and cow shit on his boots, they would let him in immediately because they didn't know that he didn't have millions and millions of dollars, you know? Uh, so, uh, how you dressed didn't matter in Texas. Um, 
and and people who were cow people, you know, they still wore they were they wore the sidearm and te- Texas they still allow t- sidearms in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Open carry. Yeah, because I remember you could carry a sidearm uh, wherever you went. Then they had a rule that you couldn't. Uh, tr- they had a rule against uh, uh, against the rifles, I think it was, but you could carry them only carry them in your car if you were taking them someplace, <laughs> like work or work to home or home to. Some- and all of a sudden, you're looking at this law and going, "I guess I can have a rifle in my car anytime I want to." Yeah, because you're always going. Because you're always going somewhere, you know. <laughs> So anyway, uh, where, where's 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 Bob Eberth going? Oh, he is. <laughs> I don't know, but his wow, dog his dogs are now going. Is he coming back? Is he coming back? <laughs> is he coming back? Oh well, I guess he's not coming back. Let's go. I don't know where. See, he... I've I've got it cut out for another yeah. meeting, but this is such a pleasure. How do I know when you're on? I don't know. I was just testing this. Okay, <laughs> I but have been, we uh... are on. We are on every night, uh, right. Tuesday through Friday, on Gabnet uh, right. on YouTube. Okay, Charlie, I've, I've, I've been with you since WMCA. Yeah. Uh, oh wow. Where you were my hero. You, I, you I, know. I told you. I told you about this. I did an eighth an eighth grade history class. Our project was a little panel based on your show, and I called into WMCA, and you introduced it to the mm-hmm. class. I tape recorded you on the radio. I said, "Will you do this?" And you were like, "Sure." Oh and, wow. So I've been with you since I was about 12 years old. Well, I, um, uh, uh, if I can say something quickly, I, I checked. I was looking at something the other day. There was a thing that I was part of called the good guys. Right. And in fact, I was the last good guy. Yeah. They, they called them the WMCA good guys, and they were the just huge. I mean, and we, we had WMCA good guy T-shirts, of which I have a, 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 a knockoff. I have a knockoff of it because I don't have my original one. And uh, they they dropped the good guy thing, and they went to half talk, half music. That's when I came in. And then they decided they were going to go back to all music except for a couple of talk shows, one of which was mine. And they then redubbed everybody who was on the station a good guy. And so I say I'm the last good guy. Well, I checked it out. There are only two of us still alive. Wow, who's the other one? Wow, um, I can't, I'm trying to remember his name now. Uh, I, I had it the other day. Was uh, Bob Grant, was Bob Grant a good guy? I no. know he was your nemesis. No, he was not a good guy. No, he was not a good guy. We were good friends. In any sense of the word? I <laughs> understand. Well, we were, but we were good friends. We really yeah. liked each other. Well, no, then I followed you to PLJ all those nights, staying up till four in the morning, Jeez. waking up, waking up for school. Jesus Christ Almighty, so, my God! Formative influence, so. Yeah, this has, been a, this has been a thrill for me. I hope to see you again. Well, let's do it again. Try calling the uh, Gabnet show. I but will. Maybe I'll do I some will. more of these things because I, I find that it works. Yeah, now that I know how fun. to deflect the bombs and uh, you know yeah. uh, do a few things like that, but I guess I can't. Thanks a lot and okay. stay safe, everybody. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. okay, Steve's going away. Somebody out there. There are quite a few of you. Why don't you give us a call? We would love to hear from you. Um, uh, we are uh, all you have to do is go right above where we're playing this right above okay and uh, join us uh, just uh, click on there and just join us and I've I got a nice note from uh, from zoom saying congratulations we're giving you a gift you can go past the 40 minutes because I don't pay for this and they have a 40 minute limit oh, wow. uh, and I guess I'm just you know they love me. They love me so much. They they're giving me an extra. They are giving me as much time as I unlimited time. I think they do that for like the first two times. Really? And then, because uh, uh, my writers group, the first two times went fine. Mm-hmm. Then the third time, this timer came on, and then right in the middle of someone's sentence, the whole thing just dropped. Wow. Well, I'll have to be careful about that. Either that or pay them their, was it fourteen ninety five a month or something? Is what it is? I think it's something like that. I have no idea. Wait a minute. Do they have anything about subscriptions here? Uh, now, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me look here, over here. Let me move this so it's out of the way of the picture. Uh, let me see here. Let me see here. Let me know. It doesn't say anything about uh, subscriptions. Oh, wow. Well. We're lucky one of the uh, people in my writer's group is a judge, and he teaches courses, so he has an account. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. 
Do you realize 50% of our, of our panel here, if you include me, uh, is, uh, uh, from t uh, is in Texas right now? <laughs> <laughs> and, and neither of them are going out. So No, it, sir. Oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> I'll bet you money that now that they've opened up like malls and things like that and stores and so on, I'll bet the infection rate goes up. Yeah, I'm sure it will. You know, and we found in towns where they have done this, the infection rate goes up. I mean, Cuomo, again, I, I like to quote him because he really gives us a good lesson every day, okay, um, said that uh, he, he will honestly say that if tomorrow he told everybody, go out, forget social distancing, forget the masks, have a good time, he said within three days we would see a rise. He said that's the way it is. Now, here in New York, we have a different situation than you've got in Texas because you're not as compacted mm -hmm. population-wise as we are in New York. I mean, you've, if you've never gotten on a subway at mm -hmm. uh, 6 o'clock at night where your nose is in somebody's ass, you know, I mean, it's that... The only thing I don't miss about New York. <laughs> yeah. Are you yeah. from New York, Sandy? I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> uh, Sandra. Do you like Sandra or do you like Sandy? Uh, Sandra. Sandra. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm from Brooklyn. Because, I'm a New Yorker. Because York some Sandras don't like to be called Sandy. Yeah, I And some like Sandys Sandy. don't like to be called Sandra. No Sandy. <laughs> and, um, you know, um, my wife's <laughs> name is Marjorie, and some people call her Margie. Margie. Yeah, Ooh. and I go, yeah, I like I like Marjorie better. I like yeah. I like Sandra or Sandra in your case. What, what's the difference between a Sandra and a Sandra? Uh, spelling. What that's a S A. It's spelled the same way. Yeah, unfortunately, in Brooklyn, they didn't know how to spell it when I was born, oh. <laughs> and I didn't find out that they spelled my name wrong until I um, got my first passport. How long have you been in Texas? <laughs> How long have you been in town? Uh, two years. Two years. Okay. All right. Two years. I was in I was, Vegas before I this was saying you, you haven't lost your Brooklyn accent. And I never will. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I mean, um, uh, when my wife and I moved to Houston, after two years, she came out of there with a, with a southern accent. She was talking like this, you know. You know, maybe if there were more Texans here, but this is such, this area is so mixed. Oh, okay. That it's doesn't look like Texas. I mean, there are so many people from so many countries. I was kind of shocked, mm -hmm. you know, that to see the mixture of people and because of the business, because Texas brought all the business in mm -hmm. and it brought all the people in. By the way, we're joined by Mandy Mills O'Brien. Where are you calling from, Mandy? I'm calling from right outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Right outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Oh boy, your your state's open. Atlanta's opening up today. Yep, they're are you, out. Are, are you are out. you are you going to go shopping? Are you going to go to the movies? Are you going to go have dinner at a restaurant? I know. No, I am not. I just went to visit my mother, who mm -hmm. is in a retirement community. Um, she needed some things, so I did go see her. But I don't even feel comfortable doing that. She's been. In her apartment since yeah. March, the beginning of March. Well, you know something? I think it's really stupid of them to open up all those places. You yeah, know? but the malls were going to open this weekend, at least the one near me, and they decided not to. I think they, they've they heard the rumblings. I think, I think a lot of people are not going to go out. Well, the question is, even though they're opening up, will people go to them? Right. You know, and I think that's the big question. I don't think it's suddenly going to mean there's going to be a lot of business simply because they decided to open up. Oh, good, the mall's open. Exactly, you know. yeah. Well, I mean, J.C. Penney's went out of business. I'm sorry, Sears Roebuck went out of business. Uh, uh, who else is in trouble? Macy's is, is in, in bankruptcy. Uh, there aren't Neiman gonna, Marcus. There aren't going to be many malls left. Okay, yeah. Neiman Marcus, yeah. When they go bankrupt, yeah. yeah. Yep. Does that mean they're going out of business or they just went bankrupt? Well, I think they just filed for bankruptcy. You know, they're yeah. they're big here, but yeah, they 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 filed for bankruptcy. Didn't sell enough of those Arabian camels from their <laughs> from their yearly uh, 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 book. Uh, everybody wanted the Sears Roebuck catalog to see what expensive, ridiculous item they were selling this year. Yeah, the Christmas catalog. The Christmas that was the catalog. Best. Yeah. What do you do down in Atlanta? 
I, I am an accountant. Okay. Yeah. But I was a long time listener of you on Sirius. Oh really? I don't get to do. I don't get to listen as much anymore. Yeah, well, obviously. Well, I'm not on. I'm not on Sirius. But you're anymore. not on there, so it's harder for me to catch you. But I tried to and started following you on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I, I really enjoy. I used to really enjoy your show. Oh well, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, and uh, but uh, so everybody's kind of staying in place, huh? Yeah. You know? And Pretty and much. you're you you I may be wrong, but Mandy, you look young enough that you're not in that prime risk group. Uh, I'm thankfully not. I'm 54. So, you're 54. Uh, wow. Oh boy. You, <laughs> yeah, you must be. You must be drinking some vampire blood or something. <laughs> I'm having know. a smoothie right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but my mom definitely falls in that category. She's 80. She's turned 80. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Several my our whole office shut down. I was the only one going in. I was essential. Um, but at, since it was just me, it was fine. But everybody came back Friday, but then the governor of Georgia put out an executive order uh, that now no one over 65 can be out until June 12th. And it's an executive order, so I don't know what the difference is, and I don't really know how much they can enforce that. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it was, uh, 50, over 50, you're in, in a risk group. You become, yeah. you, you're, you're just dancing on the risk group at this mm -hmm. point. Uh, well, thankfully, I don't have any other underlying. I'm issues. I'm at 80, and I don't know if you notice it, but Death and his scythe are standing right behind me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it, 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 being in that risk group has made me so paranoid. Yeah. You know that I, I just don't know if I can if I can do it. Hey, listen, we're well, gonna. My mother even told me I went to go get some medicine for her. She had told me she was going to go to the pharmacy to get it, mm -hmm. and then she called me and said, "Will you please go get it?" And this was about three weeks ago. Yeah. I, yeah. Said, I thought you were going to go. I thought you wanted to get out for a look. She said, I'm afraid. And then she said, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Yeah. Wow. That's, you know, that's, that's sad. It, is. it really is. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm afraid too. I'm just very careful about it. I mean, and plus I, I have had a procedure recently, which probably compromised my immune system. So I, I really don't want, I am in that, I am in that risk group and I just take, I take it, I'm very careful about it. You know, Marjorie came home from seeing her friend and she's, uh, in fact, I got to get out there soon because we have to order dinner. We're going to go pick it up. I, tonight's and I'm taking her to a restaurant. What I'm doing is I'm taking her to the restaurant so we can pick up the food and bring it home and eat it. <laughs> That's another piece of the new normal. You yeah. know, the UK is, uh, reviewing uh, their uh, opening up. Mm -hmm. And one of the things now they're saying is they were originally saying anyone over 65 was going to have to completely lock down. Mm -hmm. And now they're changing it to healthy people, even 70 and above, will be able to go out because they're saying mental health is almost as, uh, as important as your physical health. And they're afraid that a lot of these old people will just go nuts if they can't get out at all. Well, I, I think you can go out safely. You know, I, I think that if you stay, if you stay 12 feet away from somebody, you're, you're, you're playing it really safe. And if you, uh, if you wear a mask, you know, you're not wearing a mask for yourself. You're wearing it for somebody else. It's a sign of respect. Uh, and I wear gloves when I go out because I, you know, I'm going to touch stuff. I'm going to go to the ATM. I'm going to touch the ATM. And I think doing that, you pretty well are taking yourself out of the risk group. Did you hear what happened in Oklahoma City? What? The mayor had put out an order that you needed to wear masks going into stores and stuff. Mm -hmm. And all those idiots went into the stores and started threatening the people behind the counter. In fact, they pulled guns on them. So what does the mayor do? He relaxes the requirement to wear masks. He gives in wow. to them. Here comes Joe Sayer. Let's see here. Is he? Is this going to be a, 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 a bomb, or is it going to be a... Uh, uh, let me see here. Joe, are you there? Oh, there we are. He's sitting there. Uh, hold on a second. I want to go get my wife, because I think we have to order dinner. But uh, <laughs> let, just uh, talk to each other. I'll be right back. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Alex talked about going to the ATM. I don't think I've spent any cash since the beginning of March. I've, I've saved so much money. 
I mean, I, I've charged a bunch of stuff, but I mean, I haven't gone to the ATM to get cash because I've paid credit card for everything so I bought. I, you know, I thought you'd want me to order dinner. Um, let's see here. Connecting audio. Joe, connect your audio, will you? Uh, you have to connect your audio. Can you hear me, Joe? Joe, can you hear me? You, wait a minute. I, let me see if I can unmute you here. I think I can, actually. Unmute. Hello, Joe. Hey, how are you? There we go. See, I can unmute him. Where are you calling? Where, to go? Where are you calling from, Joe? Houston, Texas. Strong. Oh, what, 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 what's <laughs> happening with this show today? Fifty percent of the people here are from Texas. Are you? In, did you say you were in Texas, Alex? I used to work in Houston, Texas. That's where we met. We met. Yeah, we met in Houston. Where? What? Under what conditions? I interviewed you for my high school newspaper when you were working at KILT. This is killing me. Everybody's saying how they used to listen to me in high school. <laughs> I met you when I was like 15 years old. Really? Yeah. And was I was I nice? Oh yeah. Oh okay. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is I I have I have a friend. His name is Bobby Slayton. He's a comedian. And uh, a very good one, I might add. And when he was in high school, uh, he used to listen to me. And one day I was walking into a place here called Max's Kansas City, and he said that he said, Alex, hi, I wanted to just say hello to you. And I, I just went to him, okay, nice to meet you, goodbye. <laughs> and uh, he never lets me forget that. You know, so uh, I, I hope I was nice to you. You were, and as a matter of fact, I wound up working in that same studio. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Years later, I finally got uh, I, I got hired at Kilt. Really? And they still had that same building with the fish pond and everything? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Everything exactly the same way was when you worked there. The, yeah, basically, that was the KILT building. I think there were a couple other little offices in there that had nothing to do with the radio station. But That's they, correct. Then you went yeah. up the stairway and you went into Kilt, which was the whole top floor of this building. Yes. Uh, and you used to smoke weed on the bridge over the fish pond. Yeah, there was a bridge that went over the fish pond. Right. Yeah. And exactly, exactly right. And I remember I used to, we used to have a, a, a guy from Capitol Records who was the promotion guy. All the promotion people for record companies were like treating us wonderfully. Okay. Because we, oh, yeah. we were like gold to them. And uh, so occasionally, this one guy from Capitol Records would have his brother's kid brother go out and get pizza for the entire crew. And his brother, who went out and was just the errand boy, was Kenny Rogers. Oh, uh, no, no kidding. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, Wayne Rogers was his brother, and he, everybody loved Wayne. Yeah. You know? uh, that I don't know what's in that building now. I think it's a. I think it was for a while. It was the headquarters of the local gay newspaper. Well, that became a very gay section down there, didn't it? Yes, in absolutely. that area. Yeah, yeah. After I left it, I, I didn't create it. Uh, <laughs> I noticed. I noticed uh, that uh, Mandy. Are you are you wearing an uh, one of the Apple watches? I am. Do you love it or what? I do. I, 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 I did not ask for this. It was a Christmas gift, and I thought, what do I need this for? And then now I, I don't even know what, what I would do without it. What happens, I love to touch Mickey, and he, she, he says, wait a minute. It's oh, do you have Mickey? Yeah. Good afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Look it, at that yeah I, even, I even got the service for it. The, yeah. Like, I, go out without my phone. Oh, yeah. yeah. We don't need our phone at all with this. Uh, although I somehow I, ha I take my phone because I want to listen to my music, although I could listen to my music off of here if I wanted to by okay. using the cloud. But, yeah. I, you know, what happens? You got to use the Air, AirPod. Yeah, you know, what I hate about the cloud, though, is if your music is on the cloud, but you haven't you aren't accessible to the cloud like you somewhere where the, you know, you're not getting a getting service right. uh, from the cloud. Uh, it doesn't play that song. It go. That's that's why on your iPhone you have to say just give me the ones that are on my iPhone, because if mm -hmm. you go somewhere where we can't pick up a signal, they don't doesn't play that song. So it's right. not that great. 
So what did you, what did you wound up doing in life, Joe? You wound up in radio, I guess, huh? Yes. As a matter of fact, I got inducted into the Texas Radio Hall of Fame in 2009. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, in uh, in about what when, when was it uh, about 2009 2010 I can't remember I was installed into the Bay Area Hall of Fame San fantastic Francisco. deservingly so yes Absolutely. so that's cool yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I, that's what I wound up doing and I saw you know I saw that you stopped by my live broadcast. Uh, Friday when I was on doing my Friday Live at Five thing on my I'm still on the air but I broadcast fortunately for me out of my guest room so I don't have to leave the house yeah and during these times it's uh, you know that's that's the way to do it so you still, you still got a show on the air there then. yeah 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 I'm on four days a week. Yeah, and I I play whatever I want to play. It's mostly music. It's well, not talk. Uh, what where, where where what station? It's called Cypress Radio. It's a local low power FM, but oh. I broadcast I broadcast out of my guest room oh, via good. the internet. So I'm I can I don't like I say I don't have to leave the house. Can we hear you I on the put, internet? Can we hear you on the internet? Yes, cypressradio.org. Okay. It's good. And you can hear me there. Okay. But I was listening to you talk about your prostate cancer treatments mm -hmm. and how you didn't want to leave the house. Yeah. And right before all this COVID stuff started, I, I'd been in the hospital with an infection because I'm diabetic. Mm -hmm. And I had to go see an infectious disease doctor for six weeks. And I had, I had to go in the hospital literally three days a week to get my why, antibiotics. Why changed. all of this has been going on? Yes. And wow. so I had no choice. I had to go into the hospital. And I was amazed when I first started going in there how lackadaisical it was. Nobody was wearing masks. Nobody was using hand sanitizer. Nothing. It was available. Mm -hmm. And eventually they made you use hand sanitizer. And eventually they restricted the elevators to one person at a time to go up to the doctor's office well and yeah they got that was, did they get on they got on board with that a little late didn't they it, it was it was probably two or three weeks into the pandemic before they before they instituted and this was at a this was at a hospital professional building Mm -hmm. And finally, they started taking your temperature and asking, like the other gentleman said, uh, the 21 questions and all that stuff that eventually started. But, you know, I only that, had I only had about two questions uh, on a form to get into Mount Sinai. You know, it was just have you ever have you been with anybody who's been to, have you been to your have you been out of the country? Have you been with anybody out of the country? And that was about it. Well, you these. Know? These people were a little more stringent than that. They wanted to know if you'd been out of the country and if you'd uh, experienced the lack of taste or lack of uh, uh, scent or whatever, and they were asking. No, you know, I, they were, I, 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 can, I can give an emphatic no, because every time my wife farts, I smell it. <laughs> okay, so I can, I can definitely tell you. And what, what is the deal with the whole thing with the taste and smell? It's because just, it's just it's part, not, it's part of the virus. It's one of the symptoms. Some, yeah. Losing yeah. taste and smell. Because my daughter went on a cruise at the beginning of March. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. And when she got home, yeah. this was right, literally the day before Donald Trump said, no more cruises. She went on a spring break cruise to the Bahamas. Came home, told me that she could not smell or taste. Oh, man. She thought it was weird. And then about a week later is when we heard that was a symptom. She did not know this. And so she's like, did I have it? And just those were my symptoms. She's wow. 20. Wow. Well, has she been tested? She has not been tested. Oh, wow. She's just been quarantining. At, you know, she got, the, she goes to University of Georgia and they shut the campus down. And right after, you know, when everybody came back from spring break, they said nobody can come back. But so... She had to come home. You think the cruise cruise ships the cruise ship business is going to die? 
Yeah. I mean, is anybody going to want to? How many? This isn't the first outbreak they've been involved in. You know. <laughs> I mean, well, they tested it. It was Royal Caribbean. They tested everybody before they got on. They well, they did a medical test. They checked mm -hmm. their temperature, asked them questions. You know, did a screen. Yeah, that yeah, that, that's fine. I think Royal Caribbean they had to side line their boats because they had COVID. They were part of that. They were part of a group called Panama uh, Ship Lines or something out of Panama, and they just got because the head of that company is a friend of Donald Trump's. Got a, yeah. got a billion dollars wow. in restitution yeah. to try and... And th they, are, um, uh, they are flagshipped out of Panama. They're not even yeah. an American firm. And oh, they got a billion dollars. Think None of the cruise lines are American firms. They're yeah. all registered in the country. Yeah, yeah. And I think they're registered that way for legal and tax purposes. Mm -hmm. There's still one cruise ship out there trying to find a harbor. Really? Out of Uruguay right now, I think. And they've uh, gotten the American passengers and the Australian passengers off. They uh, created some kind of uh, a clearing that they could pass through so that they could be moved to back to America or Australia. <laughs> But the crew is still stuck on the ship, from what I understand. Oh, the crew is yeah. still stuck on the ship, and the crew has the coronavirus, a lot of them. Yeah. You know. I don't know why you want to keep them on the ship. I mean, that's one way of making sure everybody gets it. Yeah. You know? I mean, um, uh, but the, uh, thank God I never liked cruises, so I never went on one. Because I always felt when you took a cruise, you're stuck on there. You know, you, you're, you're stuck with these people that you decided to go on the cruise with. <laughs> You know? yeah. I loved it. That's exactly right. I hear there's one great cruise I've wanted to do, and that's the one to Alaska. It's supposedly breathtaking, you know. But yeah. outside of that, I just it, it did it never appeared to appeal to me. Uh, I'd rather uh, just go to the place. Yeah, my friend I'd Shecky. Just go to the Virgin Islands. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then get a car and drive around, see stuff, yeah. stop when you want to stop. Don't wait till the ship gets there and then let them tell you where we're leaving in six hours. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, That's stressful. <laughs> it's stressful, yeah. Maybe I want to, you know, uh, what I always liked in traveling is you travel in a car and you come to a town and you kind of think, hey, this would be nice. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. And then you stop and you eat dinner and you maybe find a place to sleep and then you go to the next town. You can't do that with a cruise ship. Yep. And you see the world's largest ball of string while you're on the way and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And who, who, you can't beat the world's largest ball of string, okay? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, listen, uh, I know you people probably have other things to do. I just, what's such a pleasure here is it's a different group that I'm used to talking to on the program that we do every night uh, on GabNet at, uh, 10 o'clock at night Eastern time. Uh, that it's not, except Bob Ebert's on it and Charlie's been on it, uh, but uh, uh, Joe hasn't and Mandy hasn't and Sandra hasn't. It'd be nice if you did. I've tried. Might, wow. might be too. And can't figure out Skype. <laughs> you can't figure out Skype, you know. That, that, no. Maybe one night I'll have to do this on, uh, on, 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 uh, <laughs> uh, this because it, lo it looks okay, you know. It, the sound it, and picture have been great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it 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 works out well. Maybe we'll we'll try this some night on the, because there there is a way I can uh, I can isolate the screen without having to. I can't do it on Windows, but I can do it on Mac. Uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll just try that and give it a give it a chance. Uh, if you're if you're all if you're all up that late at night, you know. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Why not? I'd do it. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, yeah. This has been fun. It's been real yes. fun. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you, uh, uh, San Sandra. Sandra. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> thank you, Bob. It's how it's pronounced, right? Bob. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and oh, Charlie. Backwards. Charlie, thank you. And and Joe. Uh, gee, uh, great to see uh, Kilt alumni. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate and, the invitation. Hey, listen. We thank you all for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.